Hi, my name is Nedra. Welcome to The Dental DA, where we talk about all things dental. Today we're going to be talking about how I pass my Danby RHS exam. You definitely need an outline of the Danby RHS exam. You can get this outline at danby.org. Now, aside from your outline of the Danby RHS exam, you also will want to have access to some practice questions. Practice questions are all over the place. You can go online and find 10 questions here, 15 questions there, or you can go to your book and go through each chapter depending on what type of book that you're studying from or those as well. No matter where you get your questions, you do need a source of questions so you can start training your mind to understand how they're wording these questions so you can answer the questions. You need a book. There's so many different books out there. You need to have a plan. If you don't have a plan, you're just like a piece of paper just blowing in the wind. How long are you going to study? How many days or what's your time frame that you look to cover this information? Very important that you are consistent and that you are really intentional with this process because I don't know about you, but I don't have $275 just to be paying all over again just because I didn't hold myself to it. Let's put all of this stuff together. All right, this is how I did it. Just trying to work together. What I did was I started with my outline and I reviewed it and marked areas that were completely foreign to me. If it was any part of that outline or any information on that outline that I didn't know, completely clueless about, I identified that right off the bat. How that helped me was because after I looked at it and I thought that I knew it, when you have that time between the last time you looked at the material and you take the test, that's usually going to be the first stuff to go. And so that works to be able to identify it with fresh eyes. And even though I started studying and it got familiar to me, I knew that that would be the first thing to go when under pressure or nervous. So I put more emphasis on those things just because I knew that would be the first thing I would struggle with the most when it came time to take the exam. The next thing that I did is I had an area that I focused on. Like there were specific things that I studied. I knew that I was going to look at these things. I started with these things and then the rest just kind of gradually happened. And I actually have a video of the 10 Danby questions you should know with the answers that you probably should check out in addition to what I'm sharing with you right now. This will give you the basis of where to start. From there, you kind of go outward, but you need to start with a base. If you don't know anything, you need to know these things. Definitely anatomy. When I say anatomy, I studied the bones of the face. You may say, well, what does studying look like? I was able to identify the bones of the face, list the names of the bones. I knew if they showed up as radiopaque or radiolucent, and I knew all the landmarks of the mandible. I was able to identify where they were located visually. I also was able to know where they were located if asked in a question form. I study the tooth structures, the enamel, the dentin, the, the roots of the teeth was able to identify if they showed up as radiopaque or radiolucent. Focused on imaging errors. I focused on what imaging errors looked like on dental radiograph, what caused them and how to correct them. I focused on the types and uses of dental radiographs. There are a lot of different types of dental radiographs like bite wings and PAs. So I focused on what they looked like why we would take them, what are we evaluating when we take them. Techniques, not only did I identify what the techniques were, I studied how you actually perform the techniques, like what made that technique. Bisecting, I know what bisecting is, but how do you bisect? I knew what the paralleling technique is, but how do you do the paralleling technique? So not just what it is, but how you do it in reading. And when I say in reading, I mean like by reading it, like I can read it and be able to identify it if I had to choose between a multiple choice question. I also focused on the units. The units was a big thing. The different units when it came down to the sieverts, millisieverts. Again, you definitely want to refer to the 10 Danby RHS questions that you should know and answers that I have provided for you. That would be super helpful to get you started. Now, outside of that base of questions that I just shared with you, 
from there, I went to the practice questions. Now, with the practice questions, as I cycled through the practice questions that I had available to me, be it at the end of chapters in the book or practice question tests that I found online, I was able to identify what I got wrong and what I needed to study further versus what I got right. Look at the practice questions as being a way for you, like you shining a light on those dark areas for you to identify what you know versus what you don't know. That's what you need to take one step further and actually review in your books so you can get an understanding of why you got that wrong or why you don't know it or what you don't know about it. Studying is not just looking at something and just sitting in it. You have to do work. So it's a process of you identifying and figuring out what works or what you don't know versus what you do know. You take those things and you start to relearn it or you review it. How do you review it? Well, you read it and you apply it, figure out how does it apply in day-to-day -day life. In this case, taking the x-rays. And if you can see yourself doing it, if you can understand how it's done, then you're on your way. It comes down to how do they ask questions about it and what would an answer look like to that? And then that's when you are cycling through those questions and you start to train your mind to be able to understand the context of the questions, how they're asking the questions, and then you are able to know what answer you're looking for. When you know what answer you're looking for versus you looking for the best answer or what you think the answer is, that's the difference between knowing and not knowing. Think about that. Then we get down to our books. These are the three textbooks that I recommend. This is the Dental Assisting Comprehensive Approach by Cengage. You can tell I'm a teacher. We also have the Modern Dental Assisting or the MDA. This was the book that I used when I was in school. This is by Elsevier, Elsevier, which that's a good book. And we have the Dental Radiography Principles and Technique, which is also by Elsevier. Which one do I prefer? Whatever one you have is the one that I prefer because you don't want to spend any money that you don't need to spend. However, if I had my choice, I'm going to be honest, my courses, I use this book. This is my book of choice. And in each of those books, whichever book that you choose, they have questions at the end of each chapter. And they also have digital content that you can use to cycle through questions. You don't have to spend money on anything if you already got the book <laughs> because the outline through Danby is free. The rest is just having instruction on how to utilize the information. And that's where we come in. Aside from your books, that's it. That's the game plan. That's how I was able to do it. How long did I study? I studied for about two weeks and they actually had scheduled the exam for us. So it wasn't like I had a lot of control as to when I was going to schedule the exam. The night before, I didn't look at it at all. And that morning I got me a nice breakfast and I went off and I passed. It may look different for you, but hopefully you can take something from this to help you be in a better position of passing your Danby RHS exam. This is how I passed my exam. Once you take the exam and you pass, come back and drop in the comment section what helped you, what you were prepared for, what you wasn't prepared for, so you can help others because we are a community here and we wanna help each other out. And in addition to that, those of you who need more comprehensive material or information, please, hit the link down below and access our resources we have available for you. We work with you. We provide you step-by-step -step guidance. We don't just print off stuff and send it off to you. We actually walk you through the process. People will find that they have confidence issues. And that's 90% of especially those individuals that are either just entering the field or who are preparing for this exam. We hold your hand. We are your biggest cheerleader. Sometimes that's all you need. If you have any questions, please drop your questions down in the comment section. If there's anything that you want to add to this that can help somebody, drop it down in the comment section. And if you want more material like this, please like and subscribe. 
and let me know what you want to hear and what you want to see. I've been in this for a really long time and it's my time to give back. It's not just dental radiology, anything dental assisting. That's the dental DA, y'all. All right, thanks so much for listening. I appreciate you. Bye.